Welcome to the Joy of Music, featuring the First Lady of the Organ, Diane Bish, and today bringing you a special presentation, A Musical Journey of Holland. Now, Miss Diane Bish. Today on The Joy of Music, we welcome you to the Netherlands, or Holland as most people know it. A most unusual and unique country, Holland is famous for its windmills, for its tulips, for cheese, for palaces, museums, churches, and of course, for its music. Today on the program, we want you to join us for a musical journey of Holland. Our musical journey begins with a visit to the Palace Het Lo, used for many years as the summer residence of the royal family of Holland. We are standing now in the chapel of the Palace Het Lo. In the chapel with its plasterwork ceilings divided into three sections with Maro ornaments, there was originally not only a pulpit, but also an altar of the Anglican service for the English Queen Mary. When Queen Wilhelmina lay in state here in 1962, the very old and historic Bible which she loved so much lay upon her coffin. Marriages were never held here in the chapel, but it was used for confirmation of members of the royal family. Behind me stands the chapel organ. Built in the 18th century, it was first placed on the floor of the chapel, but then moved to the balcony. The tones of the organ are small but exquisite, and we are very fortunate because this is the first time this instrument has been televised.
Dr. Fliekenhardt, as the director of the Palace Museum, you must know all of the little and big details of such an immense place. How did it come to be and why was it built? It was built in the latest part of the, of the 17th century by William III when he was our stadtholder and later on he became King of Great Britain. It was first smaller than it now is because he enlarged the house when he became king because he needed mere space for his court. And now it is used as, as not the home or not a hunting place, but a museum. Is now that it's true? Now a museum, yes. It was restored uh, two years ago after 14 years of, pre of seven years of preparation and seven years of uh, restoration. And it is now a museum where you can see the relation for centuries between the royal family, the Stadtholder family, and the Netherlands. Who, who was the last queen uh, to use this the palace? The last queen was Queen Wilhelmina, who was a very important figure for our nation in the last world war. Mm -hmm. And she died here too after she abdicated in 48, and she gave over the throne to her daughter, Princess Juliana. And then she died here in 62, and later on the house was used by her granddaughter, Princess Margaret. And she moved out 10 years ago, more or less, and then the house was free for restoration. Thank you so much, Dr. Fliekenthard, for all of your wonderful information and gracious hospitality to us here at the palace. You are most welcome. The gardens of the palace at Lowe consist of the lower garden, bordered on three sides by terraces, the adjoining upper garden, and next to the palace itself, the king's garden to the west and the queen's garden to the east. During the restoration, which took place between 1977 and 1984, the entire garden complex within the walls was restored to its original 17th century state. Our tour begins with the opening of these gilded iron doors. It was through these doors that eminent guests entered into the garden in former times.
As we have visited the palace at Lowe in Appledore, Holland, and learned the history of kings and queens, we are reminded of the story of King George in England as he listened to the Hallelujah Chorus. When he heard the words, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he stood to his feet and exclaimed, how can I remain seated when they are singing of the King of Kings? The Bible tells us that God is the King of Kings. And we are also reminded in scripture that even the heart of the King is in the hand of the Lord. From the Hetlow Palace, we drive to Amersfoort, a medieval town of Holland with a fascinating history and a musical ensemble which represents this history. In Amersfoort, Holland, I stand atop the Landgate and Watergate Tower. Amersfoort is famous for its medieval center, for its Carillon School, and for its Amersfoort trumpeters. West toward the sea in our musical journey, we arrive in the ancient town of Harlem with its many waterways, ancient building facades, and famous churches and museums. Holland is famous for the paintings of the Dutch masters. One of the outstanding museums of these exquisite paintings is the Frans Hals Museum in Harlem, Holland. The museum is situated among the old houses which form the southern part of the old city of Harlem, known as the Heilige Landen, the Holy Lands. In the Franz Halls Museum, formerly an old men's almshouse built in 1608, a collection of paintings by Harlem masters is presented. The eight group portraits by Franz Halls is the highlight of this collection. People um, who have been here in the museum before will be astonished when they look at one of the masterpieces by Franz Hals, uh, the civic guard piece dedicated to St. George, uh, a portrait of the militia of Harlem, painted in 1627. And why will they be astonished? That is, uh, it is by it is recently cleaned the, uh, the, um, the painting, 
and uh, we have restoration uh, department in the museum where all the five pieces, civic art pieces by Franz Hals, were cleaned. And we are very happy to be able to restore these beautiful paintings by Franz Hals because in, uh, some years ago they were in quite a dreadful state, very yellow, and all the damages done by the last centuries were very visible. All these um, additions were removed by uh, the restorer and, th and now they have their original brilliance uh, uh, back again. And now you can really see how Franz Hals painted uh, in his uh, very uh, celebrated uh, strokes, these broad strokes with a very light coloring, uh, shrieking coloring, we call it even in Holland. Uh, Hals uh, got a completely new style, important, perhaps imported perhaps from the southern Netherlands, and he got no school. But there is uh, one thing that the Impressionist painting in France in the 19th century uh, got very inspired, inspiration, and got inspiration by his paintings. And that is why many people abroad uh, come to Harlem and visit this masterpiece, these masterpieces by Franz Hals. One of the treasures of the Franz Hals Museum is the doll's house behind me in the Baroque room hung with gold leather. Um, the doll's house was ordered by a very rich merchant woman in the 18th century, Sarah Ploos. The owner of uh, the doll's house is painted in the painting uh, behind me. Um, Sarah Rote is there like Diana Bisch playing her clavichord a beautiful Venetian uh, clavichord. Uh, another interesting thing in the doll's house is that we have a small model of a, cl a clavichord in the upper music room, which you will see behind me in detail.
Situated several blocks from the Franz Hals Museum, in the middle of the town square stands the late Dutch Gothic church, the Hrota of St. Bavo. It is in this church that Franz Hals is buried. Housed within this monumental edifice is one of the world's most famous organs, played by both Handel and Mozart. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise His name, proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Splendor and majesty are before Him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Today the joy of music has come to you from the country of Holland. We have made a musical journey of this beautiful country. We pray that you have been blessed and enriched by the history, culture, and music of Holland. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again next week.